face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up guys? Of course, welcome back to another of course who was really better episode and this time we are going to look upon Sand Slash versus Sand Slash. So this comparison is definitely a bit of the weird one because we're comparing actually a generation 1 Pokemon that has yet to be reevaluated and got actually reintroduced as an ice type and steel type in this generation with of course the name the Lowland Sand Slash or A Slash. These two Pokemon are super super similar of course when it comes to their possible capabilities but they have niched out a little bit and they are functioning differently but doing pretty much the same thing. So we're gonna of course try with of course comparing these two against one another and see which one really was better. Is the original form still the superb one or has of course a new introduction in the lowland form solved enough to make it better. So with all this said let's of course go over their stats, ability and move pool. So first and foremost let's actually go over their stats because they are really similar, they are basically the same Pokemon. They have exactly the same amount of HP of 75. 100 in attack. Alola and Sand Slash does have a more in defense with 1 in 20 over 1 in 10. Special attack is where a regular Sand Slash does stand out a little bit of 45 versus a 25. But of course, when it comes to special defense, Alola and Sand Slash here take a step forward with of course 65 versus a 55, and of course, the same speed of 65. So these are not the speediest Pokemon and not necessarily the bulkiest. Though Alola and Sand Slash, due to of course the reduction in his special attack, got a pretty decent buff in his both defenses, it still is accounted as less and as of, of course specially defensive Pokemon in general. Uh, though fixing those stats is clearly important, though it should probably shift it more offensively in my honest opinion, because it means basically that they have the same offensive pressure no matter what of course form they are, have the same attack, same speed, only differentiating of course is defensive capabilities. So with that out of the way, let's of course look at their abilities, because they are exactly the same, but still not. Uh, they both get of course the likes of Sand Veal and Snow Cloak, and they do the same thing in of course either Sandstorm or Hail. Uh, their evasion will raise by 10%, but that's not the reason you use these two Pokemons in general. You use them because of the possible Sand Rush or Slush Rush. And it's exactly the same. Sand Slash does get a regular, of course, Sand Rush, which means an in, of course, a Sandstorm, you get double the speed. While, of course, in Hail, the Lowland Sand Slash will get double the speed, which is really, really, really important. It makes these Pokemon a pretty decent sweeper in, of course, this environment. And all, overall, it's a very, very good ability to take advantage of. Since they aren't that speedy and being able to actually outspeed, well, any type of Scarfers in general because they're they're getting a colossal boost in their speeds here making them really really hard to counter outside of, of course the likes of priority. So these two are definitely super dependent on of course um, Pokemon that could set up any kind of weather condition for them because they're super dependent on of course being really really fast their abilities are definitely based on it and are desperately needed to of course not be easily of course forced out because as stated they have the same type of issue when it comes of course your speed tier and attack stats though with that said they have a simple thing that does separate them apart and this is of course their typing regular sand slash of course regular ground type while it isn't the worst type in the world it does have a few issues uh, it does have a very good immunity and of course electric but of course resists the likes of poison and rock being of course resistant to rock is very helpful since of course it does mean that you are resistant to self rock. It does have a weakness in of course pre regular type of course damage and of course grass, ice and water. Of course two of these being possible priorities. But outside of that a solid type in general it does benefit really well being combined with something but ground type with a standalone typing is really not that bad. Now enter of course the lowland sand slash which is of course an ice and steel type. And while of course in the regular ice type is defensively a nightmare, steel does solve a lot for it, or at least a few of the things that could actually potentially help it. Uh, Alolan Sand Slash is probably the first mod that I've been actually intervolved and of course introduced here that filled the screen with of course possible resistances and immunity. Now steel is bringing a lot to the table. Uh, guess of course immunity in poison. Uh, we get a strong resist now in ice and there is a bug, dragon, fairy, flying, grass, normal and psychic, but are of course weak to the likes of ground and very weak to fighting and fire. And of course fighting is definitely one of the scarier things because it means a mock punch could possibly actually kill you in a vacuum wave of course. 
being weak to ground isn't the worst thing in the world, definitely could be compensated with the likes of Sugar Berry, but being very weak to fire would of course be primarily a type combination that usually are specially oriented and having a lack of the special defense, yeah, that's also possible a one hit KO. So these are the things to watch out for, but it's a standalone Pokemon. Sand Sludge has a low and Sand Sludge has a lot of resistance that definitely can make it maintain itself really well, even though it doesn't have the best bulk in the game. It still has, of course, the type of combination to actually thrive really well against a plethora of matchup naturally, which is actually really impressive. So by default here, it's very easy to see that Lowland Sandslash has not only, of course, the better stab distribution, but also has possibly the better stab combinations in general. Ice and Steel does solve a lot, and uh, it's whether or not Sandslash move pull is more superb than regular Sandslash to be able to be deemed even better between these two, because at the moment, it's very easy to see that Alolan Sandslash is superb in every way. But Sandslash has one big perk, and that is, of course, six generations of move pools that has actually been reintroduced to it over and over and over again with tutor moves. And here is actually where it's a big factor. We're gonna first go over the regular Alolan Sandslash before going into regular Sandslash form, because their move pools are really, really different between one another. One thing I do have to mention, of course, before I even go into talk about how what separates them is, of course, what do they share? Well, they're both sword stance. They both have rapid spin. They both get night slash, actually, the neg move, and of course, they both get curse. They also both get earthquake, which is a really important move towards both of them. Regular slash slash clearly because it does need it. It is a great stab move, but Alolan slash slash also important to get it because. It needs it for one important reason, and that is, of course, to be able to deal with, of course, what is ahead, which is, of course, usually fire types that could tackle this Pokemon really nicely. It also gets Shadow Claw, and um, outside of that, you know, Brick Break is also a filler move that could potentially utilize. Book it Sunny Day, you want to utilize that too, which you do not want to use, trust me. But outside of that, here is where the, basically where it all ends. While I do have a relevant move that they do share, and as stated, Swosans is one of the big ones here. Uh, because it does mean that they are able to set up against an opponent, but also rapid spin. Being able to get rid of hazards is really important because, of course, the lowland sandslide has immunity to towards toxic spikes, while, of course, the regular sandslide are actually resistant to stealth frogs. Both of these factors are really good as a rapid spinner because it means they can come in on different things and actually capitalize on that naturally. Though, with that said, enter, of course, first of all, the lowland sandslash. Now, first and foremost, what do, of course, become a bit more interesting with the Lowland Sandslash is that they both can access the likes of Iron Defense and Amnesia as a setup move, which might not sound all that classy from the get-go, but you realize that it has lackluster defensive capabilities to be able to solve that. Yeah, that's actually kind of cool. Outside of that, it does get Icicle Spear, Icicle Crash, and of course, the likes of Iron Head. And uh, these are very, very important moves for it. It also gets, of course, it can set up hail on its own. And uh, another big factor is, of course, that it can utilize the likes of Aurora Veal. The reason Aurora Veal could be such a big factor is because in the end of, of course, a possible blizzard, or I mean, of course, hail, um, you are able to, before you fall, to set up Aurora Veal. If you want to utilize yourself like that, you're actually able to do just so and double the speed. And that could capitalize on the whole team very, 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 very nicely. But outside of that, there's basically where it all ends. It actually, one fun factor is that it does get a leech life with its own and regular sand slash doesn't do. While leech life on its own is not that important, it could be capitalized on, of course, using the likes of a salt vest to be able to, of course, get some extra damage. But trust me, your regular set will usually be dual stab and, of course, icicle spear or, um, yeah, icicle spear and, of course, iron head together with, of course, the likes of earthquake to solve any kind of issue you could be facing. Uh, though that said, you know, the are capabilities here that Lola Sandslash can use really, really nicely, but primarily, of course, the stab moves is what you can capitalize on. Now, that said, we have a Pokemon that does get a lot more, and that is, of course, the regular Sandslash. Now, regular Sandslash has a lot of things that are making it a bit more interesting, uh, because it means it can be utilized in a different fashion, though still in the same way. Uh, regular Sand Slash can take a defensive rule much, much more naturally. It does get the likes, of course, Stealth Rocks. Getting with, of course, Rapid Spin, having Stealth Rock is really, really important because it means, of course, you can stack Hazard or getting Hazard against your opponent. But not only that, it does actually deal really well with possible spin blockers. You, of course, could come in to stop any type of, of course, Stealth Rock spinning on your field. Um, and uh, the important fact to remember here is that regular Sand Slash does get knockoff. Knockoff is a very, very strong move for Pokemon that could potentially come in to try to stop it. And it's a great dark move. While Night Slash does do a plethora of damage, knockoff just knocks it out of the park. 
Uh, and then of course we had the likes of Natural Gift, which is a great filler move if you want to be more specific on hurting something individually, and also of course the likes of Iron Tail, which is something that of course a regular Lowland Sandslash does miss out on. Uh, that said, that's pretty much where it all ends. These, but these are really, really good important move. Being able to set up rocks and being, of course, a hazard potential Pokemon with Rapid Spin is a very, very big factor. And of course, the knockoff, it's such a big factor here. Uh, it also can set up, of course, the likes of Sandstorm or something. We want to capitalize on that. But other than that, they do look kind of similar. So, in the end of the day, it's going to boil down to one important factor. It is whether or not these extra moves makes a or is the regular sand slash better than the Lowland sand slash? And by the end of the day, I really, really don't think so. I mean, I've been definitely been looking for these Pokémon over and over and over again, but trust me, this ice and steel combination is such a big deal here. While the both have the same and similar stats, a Lowland sand slash is such a big threat by stabs alone. So I have no problem saying that a Lowland sand slash is between these two better. And yeah, it wasn't actually till I actually looked upon these one versus one and actually starting to be more critically against both of them that I realized that you no know, Sandslash is a very decent Pokemon, but there are so many ground types that are better. And the only niche it has going is of course a sand rush and with X drills, you know, around clearly, it is just a bootleg X at the moment and it doesn't do too much. It definitely works in the lower league or lower format, it definitely in NU is definitely really really strong, but the likelihood of a Lowland Sand Slash getting there too, yeah, that's that's a big factor. And of course, together with of course Hail versus Sandstorm. In Sandstorm, a Lowland Sand Slash is actually immune to that, while of course a regular Sand Slash is not immune to the lights, of course, the Hail. And that is also a factor. I do believe a Lowland Sand Slash just in general is the better overall Pokemon. While they do different things with Stab in mind, it's very clear that Alolan Sandslash can be more punishing faster and have access to more relevant move in the end of the day. While I do believe both Stealth Rocks and Knock Off are a big factor, if they're a big factor for defensive Pokemon that aren't necessarily that good defensively. Uh, Alolan Sandslash is definitely super aware of what is want to be and that is a very very hard hitting Pokemon with really good stabs that are hard to check naturally. Natural Sword Stance, this thing becomes dangerous really fast and that is such a big factor for this. Um, Alolan Sandslash is by default better but I really really think that uh, they should have shifted the stats differently for it. I definitely believe it would have been better faster. As, as of this moment it's a superb hail setter, probably the best one between the I do believe like three we have to choose from at this moment, but had it been slightly faster, maybe shifted, of course, those 20 special attack in speed, making an 85 base Pokemon instead of 65, it would have been much, much more like Mammoth Swine in general. And also one thing that does bother me, and it's definitely something that I do believe is hurting the Alolan Sand Slash quite a lot, it does miss priority. Two priorities that would have made all the difference with this Pokemon, just as a standalone Pokemon. Ice and Steel are famous for the incredible, of course, um, priority moves in Bullet Punch and Ice Shard. Missing out on both of them, I do believe, is hurting Alolan Sassler so much. Consider, of course, their role is forced to be making. Now, with that said, I definitely could say without a doubt in my mind, Alolan Sassler is a lot better than regular Sassler. While I do prefer regular Sassler most of the time, I definitely can very, very easily see how well rounded the Alolan Sassler really are when they're compared against one another. So with of course that said, what did you guys think? Which Pokemon do you think are better between these two? Or were I super, super predictable here that Alolan Sandslash was going to win this matchup? I really was trying my very best to try to shift it on a move pool, but even at that, I mean, there is no comparison. Alolan Sandslash has the ice and steel, and that's that's knocking out of the park every time. It's such a superb timing combination, even though it does hold it back somewhat. So anyway guys, thank you of course so much for watching. And make sure to check out the next episode where we're going to get a very, very chilling matchup. Enjoy, guys.